Let's see. You found the whereabouts, the deepest, darkest forest in the land, sometimes hard to see for all the trees. The day is getting on. It's the chug yard. Tribes always scavenging for scrap, and the yard has plenty to go around. But they should have stuck with people instead of playing around with sprockets. Spin that stick! Bumper bonkers busy ram banging the door. This is your chance. You're half dead. Let's see. This box once tailed a chugger chugger. Now it's just off track.
There are things out there waiting for you. Yes, you can do anything. The sky's the limit. Now, let's take this back to Earth. Wow, you really took that all the way down to the end. In flames. It's a wonder some of these up and downs still work. Guess they built machines better in the past. The spent nuclear fuel that Toxanol dumped in the surf had detrimental effects on the marine habitats, while the overflowing landfills contaminated the groundwater. Combined, this sent their world hurtling on an inevitable road to ruin. Fruit drip jig typo. I need to brush up on my Wando, but I have a feeling he believes it was you that caused the bang at the yard. <laughs> Oh, and he says he knows you. You used to call him Gizmo. He gave you the oil-greased hands when he taught you how to upcycle. Dog. Gizmo remembers you as a nice kidling, and he can still sense the warmth of your good heart. But Gizmo says how you experience a memory can be different. You know the story, but sometimes the truth it brings is personal. He hopes you remember that one time he taught you to upcycle and hopes you've had some use for it over the years. Gizmo says he also has re-memories from the long gone, but unlike you, he doesn't think of the past, for it's gone. He understands history made Loopa Loop in a big part of your past, your present, and soon, your future. You still believe there's some good in everyone. You still have hope for tomorrow. He says you should know that what's meant to be will always find a way, but history shouldn't consume you. Gizmo understands you still have strong feelings, but urges you to keep them under control. You've witnessed firsthand what it'll lead to. Take that light! Really, you ought to use your head instead of your gut. See? The darkness lets you get away with anything. Just remember, you can always find light in the dark. Dark? When you already know you're right. Would like to know if you ever doubt the choices you made on the path that brought you to this point. Would you have been happier going in a different direction? Figures you're either a rare person or a good liar. Maybe both. Sad to see the Tree of Life is going to die and take everything with it but it's not like he didn't expect it. Understands why you're bent on finishing the world off. Supposes it's a mercy to make it faster. Wonders if you liked working with the Jagni. They always hunker down in their homes, gathering their things around them. Well, I value by you. Says things are important, but life's maybe a lot more so. Sit up. But that's not important now. Well, I value by you. Gizmo says it's taken a long time to bring the past up to the present, and where you go from here is up to you. You need to set the past aside, at least for now. Clap or see what you do. 
He can't leave the underyard as he has no protection against the vacuum in the dead zone. So you need to salvage scrap to upcycle the mecton, starting with the old crate outside. You should return when you've retrieved the scrap. There's no time to waste if you want to make the mecton strong enough to fight the jumbo puff. It's the part of the land that suffered most from the apocalypse. It's deprived of oxygen, making it next to impossible for anything but creatures that were most contorted by the contamination. They're short of breath and death to this zone. Better take care. He who half breathes, half lives. This is no way to live, but keep at it anyhow. That's the leftover you're looking for. Gross. This place stinks. Nice and steady. For being cut off from the surface, this isn't too bad.
He says that's enough to get the Mekton functional. You'll have an engine, a fuel soaker, a gun and a gathering net, but no armor, nor enough oxygen supply. Something he devised to salvage valuables from the ground. There are usually spots hidden beneath puddles of oily goo where you can use the net. He's been working on another project for the Mekton, a cannon, but it needs ammunition, and by that he means the scripts. He says if they're trained right, they'll turn into a distraction for the Jumbo Puff. Well, I the best way to find scripts is to go talk to Moog. He knows the ins and outs of every breathing thing left alive after the apocalypse. Unfortunately, this means you'll have to venture farther out into the dead zone than Moog's camp on the steep depot. Once you find Moog, he'll be able to give you directions to where you'll find scripts. Okay. Gizmo thinks he's a little peculiar, but very knowledgeable. He has the ins and outs of all monster and creature whereabouts. Making your Mekton shine. Just watch where this thing's going. Grease Monkey's Mekton is built sturdy, just like himself. Might want to hold your breath before you head any further. You're about to witness the breathtaking vistas of what's known as the Dead Zone. In the old world, roads like this really led somewhere. Now, most of them lead to disaster.
It's darkest between the stars. That over there is Steepo Depo, the cliffside that Moog hangs on to. But see, in more, Diava. Let's see. This one's impressed to see you out here. He figured you'd be dead by now. Not many are as tough and clever as you must be. Says a monster hunter hears many things on the wind. Moog says that all your power doesn't do you a bit of good if you're not willing to pull the trigger when the time comes. Out there with the monsters, it's kill or be killed. Which will it be for you? You might have a steady aim, but you need to be sure that you pick your targets with care. It's hard to make those life or death decisions for others, but someone's got to do it. Otherwise, they'll do it themselves and you know they'll miss. Claims he mostly kills whoever he doesn't like. Worries that when the world dies, there won't be any monsters left. What will he shoot then? Gets why you're thinning the herd so hard, but he wishes you'd leave some monsters for everybody else. Approves of you working with the Jagni. They have the hunting spirits of a flock of hawks. Over Bubug Enjoys it when he gets the chance, though they're not much good against monsters. Kidlo. But enough of that, right? Untlung. Over Bubug He says the wildlife, nature, has changed and turned against us. Instincts of survival took over when the world changed. He's not sure about their veggie diet anymore, and if it's changed, who knows what it's done with the chemical composition of their body output. Right now, though, he feels he's come to a point where he's got a pretty clear idea on the whereabouts of monsters, both tall and short. Thinks that it all hangs on the tree of life, when it started to fail, everything changed. Sem Moog says you must learn to walk before you can run. It takes practice before you can call yourself a monster hunter. Fortunately for you, he can help. He understands you need to start off with something small before you go big. Born. Sem There's no better place to start than a squip cave. Hunting down a couple of these little critters for yourself should keep you on your toes. Says you stick to the haunting and shots present themselves later. Are your lungs aching? Wait, it's the squip hole up. Place is just filled with critters.
need a key. This story is about a hero. Oh, idea. Go knock the lid off that sludge truck. It'll fill the place up and you can get up to that entrance there. You need to line up the switches so they match. Just a few moves left. Make them count. Good. That's enough electric current to initiate the actuators and activate the framework. Blade screaming, beware. That's not too bad. Be careful not to trip.
Can you imagine how this place used to look before the dead oil flood? Needs a key. You need to line up the switches so they match. Good. That's enough electric current to initiate the actuators and activate the framework. He says that's enough scripts to sustain the Mecton's claw crane cannon with infinite ammunition. Well done. Well, I value by you. It's not his cleanest invention so far, but it gets the job done. Use it to suck up gooey oil puddles in the Mecton's way so you can pass. Well, I value by you. Gizmo's made vehicles before to confront the Jumbo Puff himself, but failed. But this time, it's different. The Mecton will be strong enough to do the job. It's time to put a stop to the World Eater now, otherwise he fears the damage it's caused to the tree already will be too much to handle. He asks you to not even think about taking on the Jumbo Puff on foot. You'll need the Mecton to do the job, take his word for it. There's time to improve the Mecton before you confront the Puff. There are more wreck boxes out in the dead zone with gear you should be able to equip the Mecton with on your own. He got the idea to build the Mecton when he found a big crate containing the metal frame for something Toxanol had named an exoskeleton. Gizmo wants to help if he can. You and the Pichu tribe share ideals, and that's a risk. True balance requires equal parts of opposites. To stop the Jumbo Puff is going to take a real hero. Understands completely. Gizmo wants to help if he can. Says you'll meet again. Can't be too many days like this left at the rate the world is ending.
Imagine that. You could just go to a place like this to get a proper meal back in the old world. This Mekton knows how to move. Looks like you do too.
that's a jumbo puff with an appetite. Ain't no fuzz. Better put an end to it before it ends our world. Jumbo Puff is kicking it up a notch. It's time for an electric performance. Ouch! A couple of more hits and it's a fried circuit board. Bad feeling about this. It goes all the way down to the stump. That's too close to the end station. Better move up, up and away, or be swept out the bowel way. a beat. You know what to do. with a throw-up. Could it really get any better than that?
He thanks you for dealing with another world eater. You're halfway there. He's got word out of date spotted Lupa Lupin and has a feeling your time has come. He hopes you're up for it. This is your moment. The time has come for you to face the past and make the Predator pay for what he did. Just head back to the foot of the tree. Fingers crossed Lupa Lupin will stay put until you're there. He's helped out of date to get the Ark hardware restored. There's just some wiring left to do before the vessel's ready for takeoff. He just needs to reroute the excessive high spark to run through the proper plug in the system so it won't break the path if it blows. Can't imagine what you would have done if out of date hadn't discovered the Ark. He trusts you won't leave without him now that the tree is dying. He trusts you'll take him with you on the Ark if it comes to that as you share ideals, even though you both view the world through your own lens. It's not that he doesn't care about others, but the fact that the Ark only has four extra seats means you have to be picky when choosing company. So, what we have here is someone looking for a way out if everything fails. There's a seat open on the Ark, but why would you want this company? I'm so glad you chose that! We're born alone, we live alone, so let's not meet the end on our own. We are better off on our own alone. Everyone else are just means to an end. Being alone is not the same thing as being lonely. And now we don't have to be lonely. It'll all work out in the end. The end must justify the means. So let's hope the Ark is strong enough to carry us all into the future. Feel free, Fred. Your body. He's looking forward to sharing the ride with a like-minded companion. <laughs> Gizmo will always make time for you. Sit up says talking to you was interesting. <laughs>